Hey, it's time for the tail of the tape brought to you by Geico. And you'll see that Navarrete has won his last five fights by knockout. His last five opponents have won 93% of their fights. And this young man simply loves to fight. He had five title defenses in 287 days. And he's ready to go once again in an untitled fight. Se han prohibido dos golpes con la cabeza, debajo del cinturón, en la espalda y en la nuca. Se protegen los dos todo el tiempo y cuando yo indique fuera se separan sin tirar golpes. ¿Quedó claro para los dos? Suerte y que gana el mejor. What do we expect, Andre? Uriel Lopez is a tough guy, durable, but he catches a lot of punches and he catches them with his face. Navarrete is all volume, he's a buzzsaw like you said in the outset, and he's going to be pitching and pitching early. I'm just going to say this, look for a body shot or an uppercut to land on Lopez. I'm pretty sure there's going to be uppercuts, uh, hooks, every punch of the book. Maybe not the jab, because that's just not what they do, but <laughs> every power shot in the book is going to be landed tonight. And yeah, Navarrete, I noticed, is a slow starter. You know, he'll start off slow, he gets in his rhythm, and once he finds his rhythm, then that's when the motor gets running. So it might take him a few rounds to warm Navarrete up. Navarrete will paw with the jab. He'll put a jab out. He won't use it consistently, but that's actually a range finder for him, and sometimes he'll put the jab out and hold it out on his opponent and hold them in one place, and he'll start to rip shots from there. And you know what? I'm going to take that back about Lopez because... When he lost to Jail Santissima, who was stopped by Emmanuel Navarrete in his last fight, he unleashed 1,345 punches over 12 rounds, and he threw 715 jabs. And that's second only to Mata wow. 757 in 2010 in that weight class. So I'm going to take that back about Lopez. He might throw the jab tonight, but still, man, every time he puts it out there, Navarrete is going to have something coming back. You know, and that's the that's that's the activity at the elite level. You know, when a fighter throws something, expect something back. You know, I remember when I was fighting a lot of the times, and I got in the ring with like Marquez and Pacquiao. Every time I would do something, every time I would make a move, they would always make a move right back. They would always counter the play. Now the first round for Navarrete is great one. That's right, Bernardo. The first round is always like a the quiet before the storm with Navarrete. You, if, if you didn't know him or hadn't watched him before, you'd say, I don't, I don't get what all the fuss is about. You let him get that motor warmed up, and you'll start to see a different guy in that second, third, and fourth round. Yeah, Lopez trying to establish himself early on here against Navarrete, trying to earn a little bit of respect from the 122-pound champion. Both fighters are actually natural junior featherweights who have stepped up to fight at 126 due to the pandemic weight. And, and guys, Navarrete had a ton of trouble making 122 when he fought on the Wilder Fury undercard, and we all thought that might be his last time there. Yeah, and he's a big guy for the weight class, as you see. So he's going to continue to struggle. I, I think it's just a matter of time before he goes up to featherweight. And like I said at the beginning of this fight, he's made a name for himself in the junior featherweight division, but he can build a legacy in the featherweight division. Glad to be back here on Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. I'm Bernardo Osuna, alongside Timothy Bradley, Andre Ward, and Mark Kriegel. Round two of a scheduled 10-rounder for Emmanuel Navarrete, a non-title fight for the junior featherweight world titleist, making the jump up to 126 pounds during this pandemic. Most fighters fighting a little bit above their weight. But he said, hey, I was training. I've been ready. He stays ready. And this is a long layoff by his standards. After fighting five times in 287 days in defense of the title, he won from Isaac Dogg. 
Well, even though Neverente probably didn't want that break, Bernardo, probably good for him. Just because he can do something doesn't mean he should always do it. Probably a good rest for his body. You know, he wasn't training the way that he normally trains in a training camp. Uh, it was good for his body, and it'll, it'll pay off. It'll pay dividends in the long run. If Lopez want to steal some of these couple of these early rounds, he needs to just get active. You know, you know, Navarrete, he takes some time to warm up. While he's taking his time and warming up, why don't you get to work? He should get a little bit more busy with his offense. Lopez trying to get inside the body of Emmanuel Navarrete, but it's a huge advantage in reach for Emmanuel Navarrete. Eight inch reach advantage, 72 inches compared to 64 for Uriel Lopez. So it's like a T-Rex going in there against uh, Navarrete. Yeah, Lopez is getting inside. Lopez is in, in the boxing game right now because you know, you see a guy with a record of 13 and 13 and, and people can be turned off, but you gotta understand this guy's story and the fact that, you know, when he comes to a fight, the majority of the time he's on the B side, meaning he's supposed to lose. And he stands in there, he gives you everything he has. He's tough, he won't lay down. And I just respect guys like this because they don't get the credit. Uh, they get a lot of, you know, frowned eyes. And, and, and I just know that, you know, boxing at the highest level is very difficult. So I couldn't imagine being at his level. Boxing needs guys like Uriel Lopez, those journeymen, those gatekeepers. You know, his best win was a fifth round knockout of undefeated prospect Ryo Matsumoto in Japan. Then he went back to Tokyo and lost uh, later in the year of 2016. But this is a type of guy that just proves after going to the Philippines against Jail Santissima that he's not afraid to go anywhere. It's been seven years, 11 months since Emmanuel Navarrete's only loss on a 26-fight win streak. Mark, he just loves to fight. Against who, it doesn't matter. I like what I see from him tonight. I like to see him working that jab. He wants to win titles at 126, 130, maybe shoot for a title. At, at lightweight, he's got one advantage that no one else will have, length. 72 inch reach if he learns to master the jab that's something no one else will be able to equal that type of length seems like now Navarrete is starting to find his rhythm he's landing a little bit more and more on Lopez with his combinations <laughs> take a look at that referee cam you see how the cameraman are covered up in hazmat gear pretty much. 23 of 99 jab landed for Manuel Navarrete as he sticks two more out in the face of Julian Lopez. And then he goes to the body with the right hand. Very different body types from these two guys. Both are natural 122 pounders. Navarrete filled out perfectly as a featherweight, and Lopez seems to have just added weight, not necessarily good weight for this fight. What a stick from Navarrete there on the jab in the southpaw stance. I think he heard you say that he's not gonna use his jab tonight, Bernardo. <laughs> and, and he heard it in English and he still decided to go up and, and do it, so. He still, he still found a way to get it in there. He's like Tim, he just yeah, never noticed that Navarrete. Prove you wrong, he'll do it. Man, I just noticed that, you know, Navarrete, he does a lot of things off rhythm. You know, that's why he's so difficult. You know, off rhythm, out of nowhere, you, you know, you, you can't train for guys like Navarrete. That's why he's so dangerous, and he's long, and he's punching in volume, and he has a motor. He can he can fight. You know, he can throw punches and punches, even in the 12th round, even in the 10th round. He can throw 100 punches. He can do whatever is necessary to win matches. Nice jab there, and he follows yeah, it up. And we noticed that Navarrete hurt his hand against Jail Santissima 
on the undercard of Wilder Fury 2. And he's ready for round four of a scheduled 10 round fight. And you see Manuel Navarrete keeping up that work rate, throwing 235 punches, landing 28%, and 17 body shots so far through three rounds against Uriel Lopez. Nothing solid yet from uh, what we expect from Navarrete. But Tim, you made an observation about what's different with no fans in this fight. You know what, it, it hasn't just, not just in this fight, but in all the fights that I've seen. At the end of the round, you see the guys, they, they touch gloves like, hey, you know, like it's a sparring session, like good job. That's been a big problem thus far. You know, these guys are in here and they think it's a sparring session because they don't hear anybody cheering for them. So they're respecting each other a little bit too much for my liking. Ooh, the the right here in round four with the nice uppercuts there from Navarrete and going downstairs. Look at that loopy shot. Although he misses, Navarrete's got bad intentions. Break. Yeah, I slightly disagree, Tim. You know, Uriel Lopez, he's limited. He's going to give you what he can give you. Emmanuel Navarrete, he's going to turn things up when he's good and ready to turn things up. Um, and he's starting to land some heavier body shots right here. He knows what's at stake if he doesn't look good or if he loses this fight. So he's locked in, and, and he's going to slowly keep picking this thing up. Navarrete is not one of those guys that look like, you know, like, uh, like a Floyd Mayweather. He's not a stylistic type of fighter, you know, but he does a lot of things wrong, but he makes up for it with his volume, the fact that he's so big, the fact that he can punch. That's how he makes up for it. Tim Bradley not the with the flash he's got. Of the year. He's not Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> but I'm just saying he's not flashy. He, it doesn't look it doesn't look all that great, but man, it, it's effective. Yeah, it works for him. He's got 26 consecutive wins. 22 of those wins coming by way of knockout. As you see, the fans on the big screen enjoying the fights back home everybody's happy that boxing is back whether it be in mexico in the u.s in vegas in the bubble whatever it takes but boxing is back and then we got to see tim what type of shape never that day's in i mean he's been training but he hasn't been training like he normally has sparring everything is modified so he knows the type of shape he's in so it'll be interesting to see if he's able to pick things up as the fight progresses. Also, it's a scheduled 10 this round. This is not here, so doesn't talking about. Worry about the championship round. Yes, segundo. It, it's not right that we talking about. War. He's definitely in shape. <laughs> Top rank boxing on ESPN. Back from Mexico City for world champion Emanuel Navarrete. Moving up in weight to featherweight for this fight, taking on Uriel Lopez. And Emanuel Navarrete being a lot more patient than we're used to here in his return to boxing after a full layoff of 196 days, which is a long time for him. Mm. Quick combination. That's got to be discouraging. That combination. Oh, good shot right there. My goodness. Yeah, I was going to say, this has got to be discouraging if you're Lopez, where you give everything you have, and, and Neverete just takes a half step back, and you land a few more shots like right there. But as soon as Neverete wants to turn it up and open up, you get hit with threes and fours, and there's nothing you can do about it. The fluidity of Navarrete here as we approach the midway point of this fight is evident. He's getting his confidence, he's getting his bearings here against Uriel Lopez and seems to be breaking him down, although Uriel lands a nice body shot, but once you hit Navarrete, you better get out of the way, because if not, you're going down. There's the body shot. Put a fork in him, he's done. The worst thing Uriel Lopez can do is kill now. wake up Emmanuel Navarrete. Better believe he's going right back downstairs as soon as he gets the opportunity. He said, he's setting him up right now. Get him to look at the jab and then boop, left foot to the liver. Left hook to the head, 
setting it up, quick flurries. This is a Navarrete we're used to. Just quick shots in succession, finding the face and the body of Uriel Lopez, who's already been down here in round five to a body shot. This is a cold strategy that, that Navarrete right is in Navarrete. right now. See, he just has success with the body shot. And he hasn't gone back down to the body, but I guarantee you he will as soon as he sees it open. He's trying to lull Lopez to sleep, make him forget about the fact that he has a body for just a split second, and then all of a sudden he'll go back down there when, when it's feasible. Patient. I see two things from Navarrete. Patience and wrinkles to his game here and his evolution as a fighter. He doesn't want to just be that come forward buzzsaw, although that's what we all love yes, to see. And that's the last thing that Lopez wants to see here as round five comes to an end with Navarrete starting to take serious control of this. <laughs> round six of the scheduled 10 rounder for junior featherweight champion Emmanuel Navarrete stepping up to 126 pounds against Uriel Lopez and Navarrete starting to heat up here in round number six after dropping Lopez to the body in the fifth round. And there goes another strafing left hook to the body, but Lopez is able to take it this time against Gael Santissima in the Philippines. He took 141 body shots, so he's tough, but so is Navarrete. Mm. Navarrete wants to end this match right now. That's why you see him to step up the tempo, turn it up on Lopez. He's trying to end this fight this round. He hurt him with that body shot. Vicious. Yep, vicious shots to the body from Navarrete. You can see Lopez now breathing through the mouth and just taking shot after shot. The referee takes a close look at him. Oh, he's done. This is a Navarrete bus saw that done. we were used to. Yeah, Lopez he can is turn up whenever he's he trying wants to, to take the shots. He's trying to hang in there, but he won't be able to hang in there much longer, especially when that one good shot gets through. Navarrete's been landing that straight right to the ground. Right to the solar plexus. And trying to come around with the left to the body. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be fancier about it, Dre, but you said it to the gut. Right on the Kenya, right there. Boom, mm. right above that. And here comes the oh flurry. And Lopez is in trouble once again. Referee Navarrete putting in work here action. in the sixth round. Mm. Mm. Look, at the, look at the combinations coming from every angle. Every angle from underneath over the top. The way the head is snapping back. Downstairs, upstairs, the efficiency and the ruthlessness yes. of Emmanuel Navarrete at its finest here in the sixth round. No touching gloves here, Tim. Stop. The shot there he goes, down once, once again. Fight's over. The fight is over. Emmanuel Navarrete gets the knockout win in the sixth round. Sixth straight knockout win for Emmanuel Navarrete, who now has 27 fight win streak extended, 23 knockouts from the junior featherweight champion who says, hey, everybody at 126, you're on notice. The body shots are there, the length is there, the power is there. Can't wait to see him at featherweight. We'll return with the official time next time. Well, this is Vintage Navarrete just placing his shots. Beautiful shot right there to the gut, to the solar plex. That was the setup shot. He didn't throw that by accident. He wasted a shot right there, wasted a shot to the head and said, oh, that's the shot that I want. And down goes Lopez. Listen, when it looks this easy, it just means you're on another level. Navarrete is fighting, is not fighting at his full potential, ladies and gentlemen. He's placing his punches here. While Lopez is on the ropes, nice, perfectly placed left hook down to the body. And a power punch is what ended this fight. Navarrete, in just seven rounds, landed 150 power shots against Uriel Lopez. And he threw 571 punches. That's 190 landed 
with 45 body shots, including two that dropped him. So let's take a listen to the official particulars of how long it took Navarrete to get this expected win. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, tenemos el resultado oficial aquí en la casa del boxeo. El ganador por nocaut técnico a los dos minutos y 22 segundos del sexto round. Sí, el hombre que alcanza su victoria 32 en su carrera profesional, su nocaut número 28, el oriundo de San Juan Citlaltepec, Estado de México. Sí, el campeón mundial mexicano, Emanuel. El vaquero Navarrete. So the cowboy rides once.